No sound. Would you like me to do it live? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are going live. All right. Beautiful. Why not? Better sound. I have it now. <laughs> but if you like to, it's okay. Uh, now we now we feel like that, that you can't step back, Melody. Come on, let's go for okay. it. All right. I'm going to um just to change things up a little bit for myself, I'm going to just do a world peace anthem before the one planet, which takes 30 seconds, not even that. One day in peace, one day in world peace, no fighting, no guns, no war. On this day, one day in peace, it will be for rich and for poor, where nations shall all join hands across the world to all the lands one day in peace one day in world peace no fighting no guns no war because we're all one people all one nation all one planet together we can live all one people all one nation all one planet together we can live we're all the colors of one rainbow and we're all the feelings of one heart and we're all the music of one voice let's reach for a brand new start and if you know this song by now sing with me we're all one people we're all one, one people, people, nation, all one, one nation, planet, all, all one, one planet. planet, together we can live, all one people, all one nation, all one planet, together we can live. Lots of struggles are the same for all of us. Each other's hearts we really do know. We're all connected with each other. So remember that and don't feel low. Cause we're all one people, all one nation, all one planet. Together we can live. All one people, all one nation, all one planet. Together we can live. Show your kindness to each other and know that we are one. There's magic in caring for another. Your love shines like the sun. Yes, we're all one people, all one nation, all one planet. Together we can live. All one people, all one nation, all one planet, together we can live. Sing this song to each other, dance with joy hand in hand. We're everybody's sister and brother, so strike up the one planet happiness band. Yes, we're all one people, all one nation, all one planet, together we can live. All one people, all one nation, all one planet, together we can live. Happiness is the gift we can give ourselves, each other, and the world. Thank you for singing with me. Well, absolutely. Yeah, beautiful. Well, 
I didn't open my microphone, and I think the others did too, because we would be disturbing you more than that we would be helping. We were actually thinking. Yeah, I saw the mouse, some of the yeah. mouse, Marion, nice voice there. Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, you've you've done quite some podium work today, yeah? Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely. My heart feels Fantastic. Good. And you actually got up early for us uh, yeah. this morning from the United States. But we're having the United States in my own ice cream. You're sitting right next to Anton, who is in Phuket. And uh, thank you, Anton, for the mediation with the drawings of the children. Absolutely beautiful. And then we have Jaime from Mexico. Uh, we have talking from uh, Barcelona. Uh, some people here from uh, uh, from the Netherlands. Farah, I don't know where you are based again. I, I must have asked it before. And then Ukpeme, she is in the United States, but, you, uh, but comes from uh, Nigeria. And uh, then we have Eva, Maya, and Jeremy. I don't know about you and where you are based. But um, um, in summary, we have, do have the world again here together with us. And probably other people will be joining us in the course of the uh, next uh, nearly two hours that we have left with each other. Um, the purpose of coming together here is to show the world that in co-creation, we can actually solve all the issues that we have at hand. So we would like to... Uh, what we did is come together in a group of people and talk about this and see what can we do as a first step. And the very first step we agreed to do was to not go into the biggest complexity because that is impossible for us right now to deal with. The biggest complexity like dealing with all poverty or eliminating the wars of the kind, these kind of things or air quality. The things that I'm doing here in the Netherlands uh, with governments and everybody um, is difficult still to expand across the world. Um, but we can do it. We can do it. But we have to start a little bit earlier yeah. with certain elements, like, for instance, the expressiveness of art and happiness and trying together to get this positive vibe across the world. Um, and this got us together too. That is why Melody has been singing this song about one planet and a positive nature. This is what we've been collecting and been showing through the website uh, that we have, that a lot of people, even children, have been contributing with uh, with drawings. And now we leave the floor to Jörg and uh, Tarkin because you guys have an absolute magic plan to involve all our younger generations. And I would love to hear more about that and see how we can contribute to a success there too. Okay, thank you very much. Actually, I, I picked the baton up. Um, we had this discussion this morning, and I, Tarquin and I decided that we um, start, uh, continue with this discussion. So I, I'm Jörg Altekuser, I'm a, a filmmaker by profession and um, a social entrepreneur, so to speak, uh, founder of Youth for Planet. And Tarquin and I made a film together, uh, which proved to be quite successful uh, out in the field, Free Speech, Fear Free. Um, that brought us together many years ago, six years ago, actually. Now it's already six. <laughs> Quite a long time for a young boy. <laughs> and um, the, so, uh, and then we decided to pick something up that just came in our way because with the um, Youth for Planet, we run educational processes in Luxembourg. May, at the moment, mainly funded by the government. So small countries have big opportunities because suddenly you have something that gets moving and you can experiment and, uh, and do something that you can't do in, in, let's say, in big Germany. Even Hamburg proved to be very difficult. So um, although they have a very authoritarian um, education uh, system, basically, uh, to, to start with. Uh, we are now in inside the system, allowed inside, and the minister is all on our side. And what we do is a, we, uh, we um, empower co-creative filmmaking processes in schools. So we inject them in, into the system um, by inspiring the teachers first or the pupils and um, then we run these processes over the course of several weeks normally and these um, are started by us then the teacher picks up then um, 
the kids can communicate with us, they get a kind of coaching, this can be online or offline. Now, uh, normally it's in real life, but now uh, for the moment it's digital. And these processes have proven to be very wonderful for, for the kids because for the first time in this school system, they have done uh, things that they uh, never experienced before. So they got something um, some kind of feedback from others for their creativity, uh, for themselves as a person. And we, uh, for example, we had cases when the teachers came to us before the, co um, the uh, actual course, the, the workshop was starting, and said, well, and actually these two guys are absolutely impossible. You have to watch them. You know, they will not, re they will be a nuisance. Um, and every time it proved that that these two guys were the most creative people in the room. Uh, they they finally made the best projects and had ideas and were thriving. Um, and so we had this several times, many times actually. And <clears throat> there you can see that there's a need for a different type of education. And I know we cannot change the education system just like that. We've tested that everywhere. And we know that with the SDGs, all nations have signed a treaty where they are obliged to um, integrate um, education for sustainable um, development. But they don't. No? I have no country yet seen that <coughs> has done that properly. Now, with the exception of uh, the um, tiny country of Luxembourg. And the background is that the minister was <coughs> the, the responsible um, minister for the EU in, uh, for the Paris Agreement. And she is still the minister now. Um, so she is very much into this a young woman. And, and she's supporting us and she's a real fan actually. So this starting these co-creative processes, bringing um, the kids to shine on a stage, um, show their films, on, even at festivals, that's been happening and they, have, they receive prizes. And the kids are between 6 and um, 24 mainly. So a, a lot is possible and now uh, we want to take this to the next level uh, and take several teams to COP, the climate conference in Glasgow. From Paul? I hear what you say, and uh, we've been working for about 10 years already, trying to get to work together with the current um, education system. And we are managing to do so when we are going um, international, uh, because then mm -hmm. we are being valued, valued, valued for our what we are bringing, um, and also receiving students through the Erasmus Plus um, um, exchange program. We have actually received a lot of students, and then we open up space for these students and even the the, the professors or whatever who is uh, accompanying them, and they and we open space and we give the children freedom uh, to be in self-leadership and we give them perspective mm -hmm. we we try to create new mindset we say um if it is about these uh values then um if uh, if it's about these values then uh the core values that i'm presenting from sustainability like health safety awareness and those kind of things and that we have to co-create our basic needs ourselves and take responsibility together um, I ask them, no matter where they come from, ICT, or if they come from uh, industrial design, or they come from architecture or that, what can you do with the profession that you've chosen to actually contribute mm. to, to these values? And they become incredibly creative, so creative yeah. that if I let them go, they flabbergast us every time, single time again. They are so creative that I could never have anticipated anything yeah. that they have created. And that, if that is exactly the same experience as you have, then what we have yeah. to do is join forces. And what mm -hmm. Barry said, 
Um, we come from a, a world from drama. Um, our world is organized as a theater piece of drama. And the theater piece of drama has actors who are very much related to that drama piece, which is uh, mm -hmm. the way we are developing our societies. If we want to change it, we have to change it into pleasure, into uh, the co divine comedy, which is a different play. And we invite people to that different play. Also, the actors of the other play, but we cannot go into the old play. The old play is still drama, and they're playing the drama. We are playing a different play. So they have to come to us rather than we to them. We are not going to change them, but they can change themselves by participating with us in a different mindset and a different way of different set of rules playing together, which is based on this divine comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. W wonderful. Actually, this is really um, speaking out of my heart what you're saying. This is. Um, and I, I see the beauty of this, uh, the, the possibilities, and that there's no limit really. Um, and the, uh, the I, so I have experienced you know, incredible uh, a flush of uh, creativity in, in closed circum, you know, circumstances uh, where you give, give a question and then get answers quickly. And uh, this is incredible. And I, I think I, I'm very much positive now when I see climate change. I've made many films around the topic of, topic of climate change. I, I was really frustrated uh, when I started this uh, because I knew so much and I knew so, that the, our societies wouldn't do, wouldn't be able unless, unless we empowered certain people to get going no? and I, I i think that's that's what we are talking about so maybe uh, um, we will take this to the next global level um, by using the means of a challenge and this is the earth beat challenge that we came across or that came to us um, some months ago in form of people who actually had run this kind of challenge before um, but they what they missed that was um, even with the UN so they had done this for five years more than the hundred countries involved uh, 1500 uh, um, people taking part so um, they ca they we inherited that they came to us and said uh, use for planet is, is a, now our haven uh, to, to get this started and uh, what we then did is we added to the challenge, the pure challenge, the, the element of teaching, of learning. And so we will start these webinars and this learning experience in end of April. And in May uh, or beginning of June, we will start the challenge running up to COP. And after COP, we will have hundreds of films and maybe dozens that are able to speak our, uh, speak about um, issues that are relevant for young people around the planet in different places and different situations. Jörg, um, there are different people here in this audience than this morning. It's not the same people. So maybe we can uh, show the film that you made uh, for this challenge again. Uh, and I think Tarkin is in it, right? Uh, in that film. Yeah. yeah. And I also would like to know who is this lovely young lady who is also in um, our on our screen. What is your name, darling? Maya. 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 That's a beautiful name. It's a beautiful name which has history also. That's very my nice. Grand, that's one of my grandchildren. Really? Yeah. Yes. Hi, Eva. And oh, and, and who is that? Eva. 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 Hi. Hi. I didn't know you were still there. I thought you were coming back. Oh, oh that's so great. So lovely. <laughs> and you are listening into what, what we have to say. You want to be creative too and make a little film for us? <laughs> Will they be involved? Or they still love it too young? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, we're going to do it for you guys because it's your future, right? 
we are we are pretty pretty much advanced already in our lifetime, but you still have a hell of a lot to go. Very nice. And we Yes, beautiful. Okay, so I, I will just run this one minute clip. Yeah. Um just for an introduction and I then we it, talk. I put it on the site already. Okay, perfect. The earth is heating up. Do you hear the earth beat calling? Get loud and make your voices heard. I feel the earth beating on this beach because growing up, I used to live next to a beach and come every day. And it just reminded me of the power and the grace. I feel the earth beats here because um, the sand just reminds me of mother nature. I feel the earth beats here. To get involved at this stage, Create your own post and answer the question wherever you are around the world, where do you feel the earth beat? Post it on social media with the hashtag OneEarthBeat and send us your responses to earthbeat at youthofplanet.org. Okay, so um, we are asking, as you heard from this video, people to contribute their earthbeat feeling. This is just part of the process, actually. We, we just in, thought this, that this would be something uh, that could contribute to the overall experience. And maybe, Tarquin, you say something about how you came to this project and what, how, what, what you perceive so far, what's, uh, what's happening there, where do we stand? Sure. Yeah, there we go. Um, I, I just want to say thank you very much for having us on, Jean-Paul, and for setting up this wonderful program. That I, it happens every year. I'm sort of new to this community, so um, um, I'll try my best. But yes, yeah, so I, my name's Tarquin. I'm originally from London in, in the UK, but I escaped to Barcelona because of Brexit. And I, I'm 25 years old. I started my uh, storytelling career at the age of 15, uh, 10 years ago. Um, I began because I was invited to make a film um, on the issue of communication, trying to understand what it means to have freedom of speech in a Western society. Um, and so I sort of accepted this challenge and decided to start making a film. I, I, I started interviewing my friends, asking them what they thought freedom of speech was, and interviewing teachers and then um, journalists and uh, actors and whistleblowers and hackers and it, it took us all around the world and we continued making it th throughout my exam period and I decided not to go to film school I, I thought that this 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 film would be my film school and I think it just about paid off so after six years of making the film we, we ended up with a feature-length documentary and Jörg sort of joined me at the end to create a stronger backbone, a sort of stronger narrative backbone to the film and helped kind of introduce it to sales agents and distributors and really kind of take the film to the next level. And that and that's when we started working together. And and so I'm a self taught filmmaker. I kind of followed this film all around the world. I've been it's been in so many different countries now. Um, and it's sort of led to this Earthbeat project really um so I, i'm i've i've now tried to uh place a lot of support in um trying to kind of nurture and um enable other young filmmakers from around the world to tell their stories and, and i think the environmental the, the environmental and ecological crisis is the mo most pressing next threat to uh civilization I mean, in 2019 on Human Rights Day, Amnesty released a poll uh, 
which asked more than 10,000 people, young people aged 20, 18 to 25 in 22 countries across six continents. Um, and they had to pick what, what, what the most pressing issue was. And for them, 41% selected climate change. Now, now, for most of us here, I think um, this is an environmental issue, but for many it's fast becoming a human rights issue, especially for frontline communities. And, and this is where this project comes in. Um, our aim is to really enable and enhance the quality of participation of young people at um, these big global um, cl climate conferences and to ensure that we combine storytelling and impact as a um, tool for creating effective change really. Um, and so I think my role on this project is to really ensure that we have a youth presence. We, we, you know, we have a kind of steering committee of young people and we have um, a, a strong young perspective on, on, on this project. And it is not only my perspective, but we're only at the beginning here and we plan to uh, include many other voices from frontline communities all around the world, really. Um, but this is, I don't know whether something like this has been done before. I mean, our partners in crime um, who aren't here with us today, as Jörg mentioned, have, 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 have done this process for the last several years, but they've never, um, they've never really engaged young people in a sort of support program alongside it. So they've encouraged people to submit to a global film challenge, but they've never um, enabled young people to participate in uh, kind of works, community workshops and sort of online webinars and also the possibility of actually distributing their films. And so I think this is where, I think you're on mute, Jörg. I think, I think you're on mute. Oh, again. So it, it, it's about showcasing their, their projects. And yeah. what, what we do now, we have talks with other organizations um, like you know, that are working in, in a certain field, environmentally uh, or on social issues, so that these organizations become co creators of the entire process. They become curators of the films and they become um, a kind of distributors of the films as well. So um, let's take one example, a rainforest uh, organization from Germany takes um, up the role of developing a question, a research question about rainforests. Then they will curate the film, the outcome, they will help to to um, even uh, coach the people who do run these or who make, actually make the films and eventually they will help to get these films out into the public beyond the, um, the uh, actual climate conference because this is just a mm. conference um, with you know, world leaders of course but uh, you know how influential Central world leaders are sometimes. You now you, you have to ad address the underlying structures in order to really create systemic change. So, yes, um, we are bringing all, all these voices together, and that that's the the major idea. And of course, not only for one year, but for for the years to come. Um, we are right in the middle of uh, fun, fun getting funds. Um, to support the basic version of this. So we have a, a, you know, roughly half of the funding ready to, to um, get started, but we haven't you know, finished our first round yet. Um, this video you saw was just finished this morning, so um, it's relatively fresh, I would That's say. Go. Yeah. <laughs> and therefore, uh, you can imagine that we are in the middle of this process. So, um, and we have support from uh, our, our colleagues in India and the US. And in India, they have um, created a, an app that will allow this co-creative storytelling. Uh, maybe I can show it. 
let's see. Um, so that it's possible to run these processes and, uh, and work together online within an app across borders. So it, that, that's making it easier for people who have access to good internet. Now again, if you're in the middle of uh, rural Africa or India, you might have problems, then you have to do it the, the normal way, just use your smartphone, record something, then put it together locally and, and upload it somewhere, uh, which is possible as well. So no, all, all is possible. Um, and we will help to get this supported. And what we are trying to find now is one thing is um, financial support, support from other organizations that come on board to co-create and, and, uh, and help to distribute, give the word out that this is happening. Jean-Paul. Um. Yes, I, I hear all this, and uh, the main thing I would like to hear also is how to engage these young people. We've been talking about going through schools, which is a, a it is an option, and schools could be interested in doing these kind of things. It could be an in, incentive to them uh, to participate because there's this internationalization and everything that could be good, mm -hmm. and they are being financed already. But if we want to get the young people directly, um, in my personal experience, I'm, I'm having pretty good difficulties in getting to that generation because they do have a, a kind of a video mindset. Uh, they are very communicative. They're volatile. They're very. They're still in a competitive atmosphere. When I talk to my daughter, for instance, uh, 2027, 20, they have a particular way of looking at things. Uh, still, from a drama point of view, uh, looking at all the atrocities that is, that are happening in the world. Um, but how can we get them motivated to actually participate massively into what we are doing? That it's their future, but that future is so abstract for them. So it, it is so taken away also by all kinds of circumstances. So it's so abstract. Hey, oh, you can create your future. Wow. Okay, beautiful. But how do you do a thing like that? And how can we enhance this? How can we incentivize these, these young people to come along with us and do this get this into this movement and show what they can do and with videos and everything uh, because it, it's the magic the magic words that get them involved that is what i'm looking for yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, we are, of course we are thinking about that so we a, a typical example is um the, the organization from the netherlands kid start um, foundation and the Kids Start Foundation is working with kids in the Lebanon, in um, uh, South America, mainly Colombia and Brazil. Um, so they act actively run young people's um, youth groups, teams. And the same is happening um, with the rainforest people. They run uh, local communities, they support them, they run themselves, of course, and they will engage these communities and in, within these communities, specifically the young people, to come on board and become storytellers for their communities. I, th I think it should be based in their communities and not taken away from that. And uh, together with Tark, when I'm doing another project, a, a film that is happening in an indigenous community, in um, the north of Chile. And again, there is a, a woman that is um, in her middle ages and she is now very open-minded and um, she, she wants to become the storyteller for her communities. And she has already asked her son of 15 years now to come on board and, uh, and then will ask others uh, to do the same so that we have a, a, a cross not only cultural, but across generations uh, project there. You now we can build on experience of older people as, uh, and at the same time uh, have the younger people using technology, mm -hmm. using the, the means of storytelling in a much more um, enhanced way than you know, 
those older people can do because they have learned it from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does that means... answer your your question, John Paul? Well, I don't know. I'm curious also what Tarkin has to say about this. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, uh, when I talk to my daughter, she says, uh, "What well, are YouTube influencers? And if you engage mm -hmm. as influencers, for instance, then mm -hmm. um, there you get the attention of these kids because the, 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 they watch these uh, daily um, mm -hmm. kind of uh, videos that are being exposed. And they go about just about everything. But the, these influencers do have things to say. I don't know if that is the way to go. Mm -hmm. but, You're right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. target is it's is part of the yeah. target group. No, he's thirty years old. If I can do my math, 25, right? 25. 25. 25. Yeah, well, oh, no. because you said you were fifteen when you came, and that's fifteen years ago. I added that up at thirty. Sorry, ten years ago. Ten years ago. All right. Okay. So... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, I think, I mean, it, it, I think it's different in in different parts of the world, of course, but. Um, personalities and as an incentive for um, making people feel or young people feel like they're part of a community I think is is one component the key is that young people feel whether they know that person on the other side of the world or not that they their issue is connected to their issue so here in Barcelona we aren't directly affected by climate change on a catastrophic level yet and so for us, it's really this in, an environmental issue that's sort of, you know, that's kind of in the background, um, slowly, slowly gaining more and more momentum. But if we can connect these issues with human rights issues on the other side of the world, and, and young people can feel like it's their collective responsibility to be um, taking charge of this issue on behalf of our our peers, our young peers on, on the other on the other side of the world, then that's I think quite kind of an important mindset for young people to adopt. And it's through co-creative projects like Earthbeat that is connecting young storytellers from all around the world and kind of placing them together on the same projects, um, which I think is maybe it is the start of something. Um, I mean, I think we also need to. I, I think we need to move away from these ideas of how we, um, the kind of old industry ideas of how we view storytelling, the, the, the kind of production of films and impact production. I mean, the, 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 the old ideas of, of making a film is to view the release form as a formality that's only done at the beginning of the project. It's to um, pay, you know, it's if, if we pay filmmakers um, or part, sorry, if we pay participants, it will affect the authenticity of the story, um, and that there is sort of one creative vision, and that is of the auteurs. We, I think, we need to really address those um, ideas, and and we're trying to do that with Earthbeat and also this film. So we need we we really need to build these collaborative models of storytelling between not just you know one community in in India, and you know, not, not, not just a group of three or four um, young people from the same community, but, 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 but young people from as many different communities from around the world. Um, and we need a platform to connect them on, really. I mean, I think that that's the key at, at this stage, um, because otherwise it feels, I think young people in the world growing up today feel very fatalistic. Or, or that some issues are very fatalistic, especially climate change, um, and that they aren't directly affected by it, and so they're, I guess, waiting for the for the sea levels to rise and for the you know and for the banks of London to to, to flood. Um, mm -hmm. But I I think where they can get yeah. optimistic is when they build leadership values within their own communities, so that mm -hmm. they. Uh, have people who know what to do next, even without knowing what be, will be the ultimate goal, but but just get started. Like you now, Fridays for Future in Germany is demanding a new type of education. Uh, um, of course, you need a different uh, education that is cross um, cutting all the the traditional vertical structures, uh, you, know, you know, discriminating between the different topics. 
in school, you know, every hour a different topic, um, by putting them together in projects, by putting them together in meaningful um, yeah, stories again. You know, this is, uh, and including something like res social responsibility, like taking care of elders, like taking care of um, the environment and, you know, uh, reaching out to other people who have the same interest and connect them. So we, we, lots of things are there that can be learned and can be trained, um, which is not part of the traditional curriculum, but is crucial for building this kind of uh, future structure. Oh. Mm. And I think also, I mean, you've got the you've got the co-creation process, but once that once the production process is over, it's about what happens to those films and how young people can engage with those stories, really, and yeah. and even have the ability to change those stories. So it's so it's so it's connecting um, young people from all around the world to have to have to have the opportunity to, to sort of offer feedback and um, participate in peer-to-peer -peer coaching and um, and to really know that their ideas are going to be listened to. I mean, another thing is that time is really running out. And I think if we can, I, I think if we can really uh, drill that idea into the young people who aren't in the frontline communities, who are, you know, the, who are who are living in Europe and and so on? And I think that's another key argument because we really are the last generation that can end climate change. Um, I mean, right. we can and and oh. we will. But I hear what you say, Tark. Yeah. But um, when we started preparing preparing this and we started getting uh, Earthbeat involved and we mm -hmm. started to look at young uh, communities of scholars and uh, and uh, people, younger people. I actually talked to them and I talked to them and I said, well, we have this event and we have this challenge and I sent them the challenge and we made a poster about the challenge and I asked them to participate here to enter in dialogue with you, you guys. And I guess you did the same uh, to get the people here. Where are they? Why have we, even at this stage, not been able to get people to spend a couple of minutes together with us online to talk about a challenge? Where are the young people? Except from yourself, you who is very much involved with young. Um, I look at myself. I talk to them, and someone mm. said, "Well, we try to get one, two, or three uh, to participate." But I'm not seeing them. They're not here right now, and I'm I'm going to ask them why not. I, I want to know the reason. But if it's so difficult already at this stage, how difficult is it going to be to get this into a broader perspective? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Jörg, you're on mute. Um, and Heine, Heine, I, want, yeah, Heine, I wanted to say something, but uh, I, I just uh, quickly respond to this. Uh, actually, one, um, this is very broadly announced. We have uh, the long tail argument. So there will be around, you know, waiting, some creative minds waiting in every society to, to um, flourish and to shine so i i think we will get them first but then it it's getting more difficult uh, so the, the first let's say ten thousand is easy but the the, the second ten thousand is more difficult and i i think that's the um the issue that we are facing here uh, to really make this a relevant story for them so that they have the feeling it's worth participating mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, but then, uh, I, I think it's worth participating, but it's getting the message across because maybe it's my gray hair uh, that le le says, well, okay, no, we... well, but uh, maybe it has to be these influencers or something else, but it has to be this yeah. trigger, triggering getting the people involved. Or they are yes. already involved somehow, but not with us. So, yeah, so 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 I think for the young people living in frontline communities, it's it's really no choice. Like they are, you know, they are directly affected by the effects of the climate and nature emergency, and are sitting there going, "Well, I'm not, you know, my my school is 
is, is going to be flooded in the next year if I don't, you know, if I don't raise my voice. So for them, it's it's a no-brainer. But I think for you know for the young people across Europe, parts of America that are still, you know, they're still carrying on with their normal lives and they, you know, they're not affected. I think it needs to. This this movement has to become cool. It has to become edgy, and yeah. there has to be um, voices, inspirational voices that they've looked up to their whole life that are now taking on this mm-hmm. issue. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you see it within social circles. Like, I mean, the world of social media and kind of overprotectiveness and everything it it influences the way young people think and act within society at at every level and it's even just kind of you know growing up in the in the uk um (coughs) in the space of a couple of years um i remember all of my friends just becoming vegetarian and deciding that they have you know they doing all the small steps that people do you know by turning off the lights and stuff And, and and that became the kind of that became normalized and anyone that wasn't doing that was kind of socially pressured to do that and you didn't want to sort of seem like the outsider or the person that sat on the fringe of the friendship group and i think that's i mean mean, i'm not saying that we should um encourage young people to kind of bully their fellow peers into uh taking climate action i'm not saying that at all but it's sort of like we need different stakeholders in in the mainstream world let's go, let's to go to you talking. adopt this yes let's go to let's go to you talking we can we can talk forever like i can ask everybody to change and and start participating or whatever <laughs> i do i try to do a positive invitation and i get somewhere but but your story what's your story you're, you're 25 years old and what makes you engage what makes you sure. kick yeah well maybe i'll just go back to um when I was 15, because at that time, you know, polit- politic, political education didn't even start for another year. So we weren't really, you, you, you weren't being educated about philosophy or sort of abstract ideas yet. It was a, bit, a simple education. So my, at the time, Julian Assange, who some of you might know or, or have heard of, um, he was under house arrest in the UK, and he was quite a, quite a, WikiLeaks um, or something. Yes, WikiLeaks, uh, quite a famous public figure at that point. This was before he went into the Ecuadorian embassy in London, and the topic of freedom of speech and the right to communicate was a much, much talked about topic. And so my it was my father of all people who's not a filmmaker or, or, or a storyteller or anything he's just a he just tries to run a tourism business to be honest um, and he's just said well why don't you try and make a short film a 10 minute film for youtube you know get off your ass stop drinking stop smoking weed and uh you know just make a short documentary about um freedom of speech asking what is free speech Try and get an invitation to Julian Assange's birthday party. Go in, interview whoever was there, like Lady Gaga and Elton John, and just, just, oh, just do something with your life. So I thought, okay, I will accept this dare, and I, and I began. And gradually over time, um, were kind of different connection points um, on on the project where sort of one interview would lead us to the next. Who would then say, "Have you heard about this person?" Uh, you, you have to go and interview them so I'd go out and do some more car washing and raise some money to pay a cameraman and then you know go out wherever it was to Washington or to Berlin and, and interview these people um, I mean I think I, I think the key was that I was a young person and I could be trusted because I hadn't joined a broadcaster I hadn't you know I I was still 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I hadn't really developed my ideas on the world yet. I was still fresh. I didn't have an agenda. I, I, I was I um, was just being very honest with my questions. And I just said, you know, I'm a, I'm a young person. It's your responsibility to pass down this information to the next generation of storytellers. Um, 
and people I think people accepted that honesty and I think that's maybe I think that's quite a key part of people like Greta Thunberg and the and you know and the youth climate movement's argument that we really are you know we don't want to stand here we, we really shouldn't be doing this job you know it's frustrating that there even is a Fridays for Future movement there shouldn't be if you know if the adults listened to the science um, and it's just a shame that young people it's it's actually young people we've got 13 14 15 16 year olds who are actually having to stand now on the global stage and embarrass you know senior political leaders and every adult around the world to say you you haven't done something and now you've brought me into this world and expecting us to do something about it and I think that honesty is a very compelling argument. Um, and as soon as you, yeah, and I, and I think that's something we're trying to do with Earthbeat. And, and you know, that, that's something, that, that's a conversation that we've had a number of times on the project already that we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't be accepting funds from, from organizations that have vested interest in fossil fuels and are trying to find ways to greenwash their money. Like our generation see straight through that now. I'm afraid it's something, it's, it's very black and white. It, it's something that we look for immediately. Young people are, I think that's an important uh, thing to think about as well, that we are, I mean, I am the year of the internet. My, I am the 1995 generation is yeah. Generation Z and we have these investigative sort of internet skills ingrained in our, in our minds. And so we look for this stuff, but that's, that's oh, yeah. the way forward, I think. Let's have Heiner. Heiner wants to say something. Yes. He has his hand Sorry, up. Heiner. Just... Yes, I cannot resist. Of course I not. I really <laughs> want to muscle in. Uh, I think the first I'm taking home from Tarquin saying is he was challenged as a young boy. Hmm. And who is challenging a young boy? Maybe his friend, but maybe his grandfather or elders or whatever. So uh, this is the first point to really challenge young people. I have started, Farah was there 20 years ago, uh, a platform of young people who were winning the best voluntary project of the UN. I mean, 15 years ago on using multimedia doing it in really graphic design, but we overloaded them. They were underfinanced and they were left alone. So I'm guilty. Second, as far as here, we, and that's why I like to be the driver of Jörg and Tuckman some time ago, uh, we organized a whistleblower conference and we did round tables of all the whistleblowers, some of them close in jail or just out of jail, to really have them talk openly beyond the record. So what is needed is not just doing it aesthetically with harmony and nice singing, but really sharing responsibility. And, and that is my concern about peacemaking how do we involve them that they feel challenged and honored to be part of that? Our institute here in Berlin, Jörg knows it, is trying to do European vocational training projects, which is lifelong learning, but also vocational training that young people without having the same language learn in a joint project. So I have this background here. I feel very guilty, and maybe you can help me there. What did we do wrong when we were already same positions like Mahendra in UN connections with civil society? How can we give them a plateau, a foundation? And so um, using this video, which was not so much there 20 years ago, but computer and uh, graphic arts was there, how can we really make it a quality communication 
without blaming people into being right or wrong. Anyway, I feel honored to be here. And I also felt with the experience far ahead with young people. I mean, 25 and more years ago, where we in Berlin did a lot of experiments with young people. Um, it's something that I hope we can continue and not only every year for Equinox. Mm -hmm. I, I think continuity is one issue being there. Um, just to a, a, a few ideas, but then maybe uh, Farah can say something about that as well. Uh, and, and of course, um, putting people on stage and giving them the experience of working together. So uh, the project that worked best had the outcome of creating actual enterprises, little companies, because people got to know a topic, they researched it well. And uh, at the moment in Luxembourg, for example, there's a team of 16-year-olds uh, that have started a um, kind of cooperative to distribute local food. And because they found in their filmmaking that there is a huge need for that. Instead of supermarkets collecting food from Spain, uh, get local food out to the people. So now they are running a business. They are still in school, but they are sort of owning it. And um, we will now start in the next week, we will start to make a film with them about this experience. Yes, um, it is uh, uh, the hour is gone again. And um, I think we don't have all the answers and we have to be willing to experiment here. Um, also with different points of view or different possibilities to see if we can engage these young people. Uh, what I've been, in other words, uh, what, what I was saying is that we, ha if we have been playing basketball for 5,000 years and we've been breaking all the glasses of our rooms and then we play the whistles because we break another glass, then maybe we have to consider playing another game. And that is what I've been uh, suggesting here. We play the game and call it whatever you want to call it. I call this as democracy. So, so simply, I gave it another name, simply uh, because our vocabulary in a different game comes in, uh, is developed in a different way. And uh, it engages people also in a different way, not by blowing whistles, not by being fighting for the human rights, but developing our own human rights and taking away this breaking stuff um, by doing it in a different way. Anyway. That is one suggestion. Obviously, we have to do two because somehow the old castle has to come down and the new castle has to be built up just to stick to metaphors. <laughs> um, but I think we are a team here. And if there is a willingness to experiment and to evolve people who have the psychology and, to, and the influences and whatever, and not be too much judgmental, but uh, offering the young people a platform and an open space where they can be themselves, then uh, hopefully we can um, get somewhere and we take it from there. We hope to can pick our fruit in a very short term. Um, that is my message. If anybody wants to say something, because then we can go to another part. I see here some, some young children who might want to see their drawings back on the video. And, uh, and that is also very important. Um, so anybody want to uh, make a final remark about the subject that we have here, apart from the commitment that I myself give to Jörg and Tarkid and everybody about this video challenge, because I think it is important to involve those people. But I do it, I would do it my way, by playing a different game. Mm. Mm. Yes, Heiner, you want to say something, Stuff? Yes, I want to be co-creative. Yeah. and really bring all the futures together, the filmmakers, the parents, the Fridays for Future drunk people. And we did a little uh, film about this with Jörg <laughs> at the Entrepreneurship Summit last year or the year before. And I was trying to show it, but I'm not allowed. This is always this problem with having a teacher who is allowing you to do something. So what we did, we get the Fridays for Futures, the young people, the system sciences, and all these people together. And this morning we had um, 
um, Gabriele with us. Um, she is teaching young people in parliaments about systems and whatever. So if I cannot show it to you, I will show you the documentation and uh, provide the link to the film Jörg has been doing. And I'm done. Thank you. All right. Uh, share the film through the, um, if you want, through uh, the chat or otherwise, and then I can put it also on the website. Mm -hmm. um, so it'd be, I'd be happy to share everything because if, if you've been creative, also in entrepreneurship, we have to go to a different type of entrepreneurship too. And I already shared a document with you, Heino, which you reacted positively on. All right. Shall we go to the next part here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, you too, Jörg. Thank uh, you very beautiful. much, guys. Yeah, and Thank you. Yes. More, Absolutely more, magic. more power to you all. <laughs> <laughs> and to you. <laughs> yes. Keep going right. the way you're going. And Thanks through very the other. much. We'll, we'll all speak right. to you soon. All right. We um, I go to the second half. Well, we are going to show the fruit of our uh, co-creation. Um, this part that we've been doing now with Jörg is, uh, is setting up a, a particular uh, energy to get young people involved. But we already got a lot of people involved with the actions we've done throughout uh, the last few months. And um, in reality, as I said before, what we try to do is to get a positive vibe into the world, get this different play, um, playfulness into the world. And uh, that it can be done, that we can empower people and that people can empower themselves uh, by doing and being creative and becoming happy um, by doing so. Um, so when we started uh, during COVID, um, I wanted to introduce sustainocracy, but I cannot introduce sustainocracy just like that by telling people, because then I'm preaching some kind of religion or whatever kind of stuff and that, which is not my way of working. I have... Because who am I to impose anything or to suggest anything, a behavioral issue to people? Uh, what I do is I invite people to co-create and to uh, look at human values, which are not mine, but ever, from everybody. And those human values, I um, uh, established five, which are human values, natural human values, which, values which are already millions and billions of years old. It's the way nature works. So... If we use those values and we look at ourselves and we see we've gone into detriment uh, because we have been polluting our environment, we've been uh, uh, destroying even cultures or people and whatever because of our financial or whatever kind of material needs, we know that we're doing things the wrong way, not simply because it is ethically wrong, it is also spiritually wrong from the essence of being part of a ecosystem, a natural ecosystem, not just our ecosystem. So. Um, knowing that these core values exist, I can invite people to co-create those core values where we have lost them, and we have lost them everywhere. So I did, started doing this about 10 years ago here in the Netherlands, and I got all these people involved, like uh, um, I have many, uh, something like 21 municipalities, different type of uh, um, um, organizations or uh, government organization, different levels, even at national level, um, I've got a lot of citizens, a lot of entrepreneurs and people uh, working together in this and all sitting around the same table, working, for instance, about uh, on air quality or what Jörg was talking about, the food system. In the, I had one of the biggest food systems in, this, in, tit, in the city uh, with aquaponics and, and mealworms or whatever, you know, all producing kind of stuff. And it was all done through co-creation. We did not put money up front. If I put money up front, I can only get people who want that money. If I put an objective up front, I get people who are willing to invest some part of their energy and their talent into that uh, objective. And if that can make money or people are investing in that, then we can share, of course, the money part. But money is only a means. Um, the talent and the creativity of people are much bigger means that if they actually put that forward, um, the sky is the limit. And we have been demonstrating that here. So my objective during COVID was to go worldwide with this. Uh, we have already been recognized by Harvard and everybody like, well, the first system at level four society development and that kind of stuff, which is all beautiful, you know, to make us real and not just an ideology. But 
um, it is still difficult enough to get this worldwide. So when we proposed this in the group and the people who joined us, uh, we started discussing what can we do. And then Barry, who is not here, unfortunately, he made this analogy between the theater, which I mentioned before, like the world has developed around the drama and the drama is um, is a cost of society. It's also econom economized and everything. So that's this play game that has been developed that all these parties, including the national, uh, the United Nations, are all working in that particular way. Even if there are very pe people who have the same feelings that we have, they're still sitting there in that particular network doing the things that are expected from them from that play point of view. The other part is working in a different way from a different mindset from the core values up front, which is, I, did, I produced a video in, in one of the speeches of five minute video, where I asked the people to cross the line and actually start working from that mi mindset, not only the people, but also the institutions. So here in this environment, we said, okay, what can we do on a worldwide basis? And then we said, can we use art and the expression um, for producing happiness and this positive vibe to people. And that is what we uh, decided to do so that people in a co-creation environment started getting trust again in themselves and getting uh, the wish to go forward um, with this uh, particular attitude. And the very first one to step into this was Jaime, who is here. And Jaime is here from Mexico. And um, he got the school of his kids to participate, and they were the very few at first to produce drawings, drawings that started to go worldwide. And we actually used them also um, for as kind of a logo of uh, communication throughout the world of what our um, ideas were. The kids uh, produced drawings with personal messages about happiness in English, which we could share too. I can show um, maybe the, some of those drawings now from the website uh, because I, um, I made a collection. I, later on, I received drawings also from Greece and I received drawings from um, other parts. So I can share that with you. But maybe Jaime wants to say something about his experience in the school. Meanwhile, I look up the, uh, the drawings. Jaime, do you want to say something about it? Jaime does not want to say something about it. I see one of the young ladies saying no. <laughs> Jaime, do you hear us? No, he does not hear. <laughs> okay, never mind. I, I start sharing the screen. Now, here you go. Life is short, choose happiness. <laughs> well, there's a reaction in Mexico. Somebody is, is probably going to see his own drawings here. Sebastian, six years old. Um, important here too to note that they had a discussion in school about privacy and the kids. So they used only the first names and not the surnames, which I thought was a very wise decision. Um, here, Diego, this is yours. Uh, you probably recognize the one that you did, and Diego is watching his own drawing right now. Um, then we see uh, the messages that they have been putting on. Um, oh, I don't see, I'm, I think I only used the drawings of the, oh, here is one for my happiness is being with my family and going on vacation. We see this, uh, we have about 30 drawings of the kids and they are all on the website. Um, and they're also on an online exhibition, which we've created. Now, the important here is that to see what happiness is for these young kids, it is family. It is caring for each other. It is also another one, very important what I saw, is having a home, a safe place where to go. So they are, living these core values directly by themselves. 
also adventure is one adventure and we're connecting here to the earth beat uh, challenge adventure is something that is very much uh, connected to that through hobbies and that and of course friends so those are their instruments for happiness and the way they perceive it then we have gambia which is the art that they have uh, shared with us as a um, african connectivity between africa and the rest of the world uh, was the arms that you see here They've been sharing this with us, especially with us uh, for this program that we had, which is co-creation. In Greece, the teacher, Marina, that we have in, in, uh, in Greece, she had difficulties explaining uh, the happiness concept to her students, uh, simply because she could not see them physically in a classroom. She had to work with them online. So she says, well, try to imagine a tree. And imagine happiness in relationship to a tree. And this is what came out. Um, she sent this a couple of days ago. They were uh, involved um, maybe about two or three weeks ago. And this takes a bit, bit of time to get organized. Uh, yesterday, I received Phuket International School. And this is the harvest we have from these kids. And uh, what I love here is that when they draw earth, they draw, don't draw earth with the Netherlands bang in the center like the kids here would do. They draw earth, obviously, with Bali or with India or with Thailand, right, right in the middle of the, uh, of the face, which is very nice to see. So we are all the center of our own universe, and that is pretty interesting. So that, this is the type of things. Then here are the children, which we've seen before during the music part. They have, for this project, they have been painting their shirts. They took a shirt back from home and they, with their hands in the, in, in, in the paint, as you see here with this little boy, they have been making their own um, designs and they did music, a music um, uh, exercise. So you see here, uh, what is happening if we just spread the news and give the people the space and the opportunity to perform and give them the recognition by doing this online like we are doing here. Right? Did you like that, Eva, Maya? Did you like those pictures of other people? Yes? Can you draw one for us too? Not now. Can you draw one one, uh, one day and send it to us? <laughs> Lovely. Great. That's very nice. Thank you. Already in anticipation. We are looking forward to receiving one. Jaime, nos escuchas ahora? Yeah. You, you, know, you can't talk? <laughs> okay. Well, you enjoyed that. You like that, right? Of course. Beautiful. Well, that is one of the things. Then people started reacting with, oh, wow, look at that. Oh, they've been working already. Beautiful. <laughs> That's great. Look, where's the inspiration from Mexico? America is getting to work now. Look at that. There are no walls. <laughs> There's just connection. I had a friend from Uganda who is living here in the Netherlands. Look at that. This is, these are the artists. I have a friend from Uganda who says borders are just showing there where we bridge cultures. They're not to separate cultures. And I think that is a beautiful analogy too. We should really stick to that. And that is what, we, what is happening here. We see the kids now from Mexico inspiring the kids from, uh, from the United States, from Portland and back again. Are you actually also, yeah. Okay, Deborah is in Mexico too in San Miguel. All right. Lovely. Oh, yeah, I see the photograph behind you. Now I, I start to recognize it. Oh, beautiful. Maybe let, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, we did some more stuff. Like uh, people started reacting also with photographs. And um, so I already showed some photographs of the people from Africa, but there have been other, other type of photographs. I can sh share that too. Um, and, and we go back here and then we go to uh, a photo selection. I, I made a photo selection because if you, if you have some time and that you go to the, uh, to the website 
and uh, and have a look at most of the photos and you can actually use them also for educational purposes or whatever you want to do with them um in a in in a co-creation matter or spreading the word uh, but this for instance comes from a teacher in turkey he says just look at nature just go to nature and have a have a look what what nature brings us all the time it is magic all day and it is the skylines it is the dogs it is whatever you see here a picture of the teacher himself and he shared this with us because he's part of the uh, the team in turkey that provided us with various videos also on dancing and music which we have been sh showing this this afternoon with a couple of blocks um a couple of hours ago then it, there's this African part here, which uh, I've shown already, um, which are photographs also showing the unity between um, all of us. We are not the same, but we are all equal. And let's make it a, a, a curiosity to actually get to see uh, the richness of our differences so that we can stimulate and inspire us through each other. Then Turkey also uh, showed us the happiness of teachers and working together with their kids uh, at school. They came through Erasmus Plus to the Netherlands and we've been working with them um, on, for instance, connecting um, some of their education to the core values like art and health and how do you deal with that. Don't forget to smile. Well, that's a very important one. I had a professor one day when we talked about the transition of energy and he um, had the closing word. I, a word. I invited him to do the closing word and what he said we all tend to forget the major part of energy that is free of charge in the whole world, which is a smile. And I think that is an important one to hold, right? This is Erasmus Plus and they were visiting us and we were doing things with the kids. Since, since with these youngsters, we can do things when they come to us because they are free, they're curious, they're inspired uh, because they are traveling. Um, so they open up very much to um, all kinds of information. They're like sponges um, filling themselves with all kinds of information and new stuff. They're also very willing to co-create very much more than when they are at home. So we have to use these kind of things um, together. Anyway, then people started singing and they started sharing music with us. And we have had a whole block, two hours full of music. Which has been amazing, the type of music that has been shared with us. I don't know, Melody has, 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 has done her part in it, but I think you enjoyed as much as us, all the uh, stuff that has been shared from all over the world. It's really amazing. So that is co-creation. And now what I would like to see is what can we do together with all this? What can we do? to expand the co-creation to even more complex issues? How can we spread it to invite more people? Uh, not just the theme of happiness, but also the, the theme of co-creating our wellness, um, taking responsibility together for our things, showing how other people are already doing it in different parts of the world. I open up the dialogue. Anybody want to say something about that? Maybe Deborah wants to um, introduce herself. And Marion also already raised her hand. So Deborah, go for it. Tell us who are you? Hello, everyone. Greetings from San Miguel. Um, I am um, a friend of Melody's. And uh, we have been working together for peace for oh, I don't know, 25 years or so. <laughs> and um, what, what can I tell you? I am an interfaith minister. I'm the founder of the Garden of Light, which is an online platform to explore the emerging global spirituality. And I'm the director of the Evolutionary Leaders Circle project of the Source of Synergy Foundation. That includes such leaders as Deepak Chopra, Greg Braden, Jean Houston, and many, many people who are at the forefront of, of um, helping us all to step into the new paradigm. Uh, I worked for many years representing the prayer, may peace prevail on earth at the United Nations. 
and the organization, uh, one of the sister organizations involved in that prayer, the Goy Peace Foundation, has an international art competition for children every year. Oh, I don't think they call it a competition. They don't like that word. <laughs> But they have a different theme every year, uh, and um, they have children from around the world who submit art uh, to that. And I'm thinking that happiness would be a wonderful theme for them to use uh, the next time around. Uh, get some drawings as beautiful as the ones that you've received. So it's a pleasure to be with you. Hello. Well, thank you very much. And I think that suggestion that you made is very important to continue with this uh, vibe that we have about happiness and build on on that foundation uh, very interesting anybody wants want else want to say something about it marion oh yes your hand is raised of course yes well um <clears throat> it was something about you said that we have to go on with this about co-creation that people are willing to co-create that we can um, yeah, get them away from that feelings of doing it on their own, of conquer, to be uh, in competition. It's not about that. We, we have to work together to take our responsibility and to really create a, a better world. So we can only live our example by, and share it a lot in, in, in our communities and so on, so that we can create that different humanity story. Yeah, that's my point of view, yeah. No, it's a very significant point of view, of course. Uh, it, I believe that young people do have to go through a phase of competition because that is one of the ways to understand what they really are themselves and, and to discover their own strength. Um, but that is a phase, a short phase of their life. Once they understand that competition is not working, but it is uh, looking at their own authenticity rather than comparing with somebody, uh, somebody else, they stand up and develop the peace book. Look at that. You have the peace book. All right. My... And that's an important book, right? Yes. Have you read it? Good. Very good. Can you share any information with that? What is peace? Do you know what peace is? Many things like sharing and helping people. Lovely. Well, thank you for sharing this. It's beautiful. Magic. Yes, very good. This is, yes, we have her engaged. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, yes. And so that once they get through this competition, and that, that is at the age 16, 17 or something, and maybe even earlier on some, some occasions, uh, we can also guide the competition. Um, I have taken my children, for instance, that competition can also be done singing. You can sing carols and you can do a um, type of how do you interact with each other and how do you play your differences in a very peaceful way rather than having to fight through it. So also the competition phase of awareness development can be done in a very educational way. Um, but then once they discover their authenticity, we have to really uh, build on those, that foundation and empower them very much in what they can do. So that one plus one becomes three or four or much more. Um, I would like to also share some of the videos that has, have been shared with us. Uh, spoken videos by people who are busy with other people uh, trying to uh, take them away from the drama and helping them discover the comedy and having the different type of paradigm. Um, some people are not prepared for that. They're very much stuck in their uh, comfort zone, but people who are stuck in their chaos and they're letting go and everything, they do find themselves uh, in the comfort of people who already went through this process that they uh, get this warm, warm bath and this receival of people who give them some kind of guidance. Um, so can we uh, maybe have a look of one of the people that uh, shared information with us is, Ma is Melody herself. She has this uh, beautiful mantra for us and, and you did it even live in a, in a previous session. Um, then we have Jacqueline. Jacqueline, she is a author. Um, and she wrote a book, 365 Days of, uh, of 
uh, happiness. Um, she sent us a personal message too. Um, if you don't mind, we share this with you. And uh, we listen also to Melody. Or you want to go first, Melody, with your personal message. The peace, the uh, happiness begins with me pledge. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. I wanted another chance to play my gong. Okay. Uh... <laughs> it's hidden over here. I can't quite get it front and center. Yes, I say this happiness pledge uh, all the time to myself, and I encourage children and adults to say it too. It really helps raise consciousness, and it goes like this, and feel free to say these words after me, and hi, Maya. <laughs> okay, now unmute yourselves. Unmute yourselves so we can repeat the words. Yes, unmute, yeah. Unmute. There'll be, there'll be a lag, but who cares, right? Yeah. It's, Okay. Eva, Maya, you can unmute and say the words that Melody is going to say. And you call her Gorality, I think, right? Yeah, which is a combination of Grandma and Melody. Yeah, beautiful. Maya made that up, <laughs> which is very little. <laughs> and it's stuck. So here we go. I know. I know. That happiness. About happiness. That's the sign language for happiness. Yeah. Begins. Begins. With me. With me. with me with the words i choose to say with the words i choose to say with the thoughts i think with the thoughts i think with every action with every action and reaction and reaction in my home my home in my school my school in my neighborhood my neighborhood inside myself inside myself and towards you and towards you Together, together, we can plant magic seeds of happiness. Magic seeds of happiness, and they will vibrate. And they will vibrate throughout the whole world. Around the whole world. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. That happiness. That happiness begins. Begins with me. With me. And with you. And with you. And so it is. And <laughs> that's right. Well, thank you very much. You did it again. And the gong. And the gong. Absolutely. <laughs> you also. You also um, please us with the release of a book. Yes, actually, my family doesn't even know, but they're about to get the book. Um, I just released, and this perfect timing, everything seems to be so um, synergy. Um, ignore this, I don't even have a fresh copy yet. It's called Peace Dreamer, A Journey of Hope in Bad Times and Good. And actually, Maya helped contribute uh, a little bit to it. Um, oh with her philosophy about something called kindness arguments. Um, I wrote the book during the pandemic unexpectedly. Uh, the main questions are who are you and how do you want to um, make the world a better place in which to live? Um, and it made me go very deep within and I asked the reader some deep questions. Um, it's a book of self-discovery and her inquiry and about what happened to me is that even though I was extremely upset is a mild word about the last four years that had been going on in the United States and about the pandemic, somehow I also found a way to um, feel and find a new definition and communicate it of what love truly is and what peace truly is, the most inclusive definition. And so uh, I, that, that is what I wrote in the book. So it's filled with a lot of inspirational wisdom and self-care tools, because how are we going to share happiness, share peace, uh, all of that, if we feel chaotic within ourselves? So. You know, it all starts with us. Peace begins with me, right? So, um, yeah, I, it's a very spiritual book and a very grounded book. So thank you for sharing it. It's on Amazon as of yesterday or the day before. So mm. peace, peace streamer. 
Very good. Well, you. you, from your authenticity, you produce your book, your songs, and even the play for children. We introduced that a couple of times already. Um, yeah. I'm going to also share the video of Jacqueline. Um, so that uh, she has written a book too, and she seems to be pretty successful with this. Uh, but more importantly, that pre presenting her book, which is obviously her um, uh, means of living, probably, uh, she also has some advice for us. So ha let's have a look at what we can what we can uh, learn from here from her. Let me see. I go to the personal message here. Uh, hang on, this is going to be it, but I have to stop sharing because I forgot to put on the sound, I think. Share sound, okay, no, it's already there. My name is Jacqueline Perlo. I also am very known as Freaky Healer. Um, then I am a holistic practitioner. I am an author and I absolutely, you know, I have a podcast too. And all my work and myself and how I live and everything really stands for mindful happiness, for conscious happiness, mindfully living and consciously living and really enjoying life as is without anything really needing to change instead with finding the bliss and the everyday joy in whatever we do whatever there is and whoever we are in every split second there is so i've been doing my work and my happiness work and you know helping people live um, better lives since a long 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 time and it works for me it works for my clients it works for my family and one thing that i want to share with you is that of course because i wrote a book and um, my bestseller 365 days of happiness it is a daily passage book that basically talks every day in a passage about how to align with mindful happiness and uh, you don't have to go buy anything you don't have to do much it's more of an alignment a constant shift to uh, be and live in a high for life frequency i call that the happiness frequency so no matter if you're sad no matter if you're angry or whatever there is in your life that you find the beauty in it and that you find the peace of mind that there is even happiness in these moments and yes i am actually gonna give away one of the books one of my book uh, I'm there to a lucky winner in the US only and uh, because I'm stationed in America. I'm originally from Switzerland, but I live with my family in America. I'm 365 days of happiness. Um, I wrote this uh, every day in 2017, every day, all day long. I focus on joy, bliss and happiness. And I wrote this book every single day. And first it was a blog, people loved it. And then I said, okay, I'll make a book out of it. And it became a bestseller and up, you know, it was published in 2018. And by now it's really a, a dear daily guide for many because it's not hard to really find your own happiness. It's not hard. It doesn't take much. It's more like a constant shift. And it's also an understanding and knowing that happiness can be in your breath. You know, if there's nothing else there that you can really find, um, you know, beautiful right now in your life because sometimes life gets really hard and uh, we all know that it's, it's for everyone the same. And then you can focus on your breath, which is happiness. You know, it is really happiness. You can focus on your blood pumping through your veins and that's happiness. You can focus on a piece of chocolate and that's happiness. And then there's always your inner you where you can align with your inner you, who you really are, that pure positive energy, your heart, your love. 
that absolute beautiful, beautiful whole being that you are, and you can align with that inner you, and there, in there, there's always all the bliss and all the happiness that you can just imagine, really. And when you live through that essence, through that wonderful, happy essence that you are, then it's almost like you put on glasses, you know? It depends a little bit what glasses you're putting on. If you're putting your true happiness glasses on, then you can find a glitter of happiness in everything and at all times, you know? It's not hard to find. It's more a shift and it's a knowing that it's actually always there. And um, 365 Days of Happiness is actually a series I also wrote the journal book that goes with it. It's a daily journal book with questions and everything. It matches the daily passages that help you to focus and to journal and write about what this actually means for you. And uh, there is also a special edition that's new, which is a little bit bigger in size. And what it is, it's the daily passage that you can read and there is room for your notes. Because to me, journaling and Putting your notes, uh, your, your thoughts as notes on paper is amazing. It is very, very powerful because ultimately nobody else knows you better than you. Nobody else knows how you feel happy and what happiness is for you and how to get yourself into a happy state better than you for yourself. I'm just here with my books and my work to help you to shift into your own high for life frequency, into your own happiness. And even if it gets hard sometimes, know that that's okay too, because there's beauty in the hard times too. There's a lot of learning, a lot of growth in there. And if you really feel and tune into that in your inner you, then that is happiness too. When you're sad, a good cry is happiness. You know, when you're angry and that warrior energy that you actually are and have, that, like realizing that I'm feeling that without letting it out on anybody else is happiness. You as a whole being, the way you come, no matter what's happening right now, no matter the emotions, that is happiness because there's beauty in everything. There is joy and bliss in everything. And you know, there is always the sky. You can look up into the sky and you can imagine different art pieces in the sky. And we all have access to the sky day and night. It's always there for us. So I invite you to make yourself happy in easier ways, to not make it so hard to be happy and feel good. And to just kind of like blissfully see that there is really happiness all around you, all inside of you. And it's always there 24 seven, no matter what. I hope this inspires you. My name is Jacqueline Pertle. You can find me at freakyhealer.com. My podcast is called The Daily Freak. It's free. It's every day to listen and to shift yourself. And my books are, you can get them wherever books are sold. And one is actually going to be up for winning. So happy, happy, happiness day. I wish you so much bliss. Bye. Well, that was Jacqueline. All right. Um, comments about the personal comments that we see uh, it's a new face also um, uh, who joined us, uh, D de Roost. Um, hi, welcome. Um, yes, any comments how to continue about this? Because this is a being happy and looking in the now and living in the now and seeing what, what we see. Um, and enjoying that in every breath that we take is obviously an important message too. What the harvest has been is songs. It has been educational processes. It has been all this advice, books uh, that we can share with each other, that we can share with our public, we can share with our people. Um, we've seen the songs, the paintings of the children. Uh, we have seen the engagement of something like 40 different schools, only after a few months of working together in co-creation in this happiness type of thing. Can you imagine what we are able to achieve? Because we've only been about 20 people uh, working together, meeting on the Tuesdays, um, taking this at heart. And, we, and it just started to flow across the world for 
and we started developing what can we do and the dot on the horizon, which was today, we can take another dot on the horizon and work towards it. The thing is, um, if we are managing with 20 people to create such an immense amount of abundance and so much quality in the singing, in the participation, if I calculate how many people actually participated in this directly and indirectly, we're probably talking about a few thousand. Then what can we do if we extend this a couple of months more? We can reach so many people. We can and get people to trust themselves and, and, and their communities and take care for each other. Um, so how can we take this any for, further? Anybody it's a suggestion? We co-create. <laughs> and repeating is very powerful. Keep on repeating. Uh, give it, give the message. Keep on giving the message. I like the message of, uh, of uh, Jacqueline to, to write down your moments of happiness and to write down these kind of things. I do this. All the experiences that I, and that flabbergasted me with my children when I was with them and they had experiences, even the bad experiences, whatever experiences, I wrote them down in my agenda. I didn't need a special book for that. I just wrote them down. Now I have a collection of agendas, which I don't want to throw away because they're full of memories, full of beautiful stories. Um, it is, when I read them, I, I become happy because I see we've got, overcome so many difficulties together, which is beautiful. The difficulties by then were challenges and sometimes painful. But when you look back at them, they made us the way we are today. And they contributed to the way we look at reality today. So they are key moments in our lives. And everybody has key moments like that. If we identify them and we remember them, we celebrate them, we, um, we feel happy every time because we start getting into the habit of being happy. Anybody else? No, otherwise then uh, we're 10 to 6. Uh, maybe it has been a long day for all the people here. Um, maybe it is time to start closing off. And on Tuesday, we do our reflection about the whole day because we've had three blocks now. And uh, this has been uh, quite extraordinary. From my perspective, I'm, I'm filled with gratitude. Um, gratitude to the contributors just out everybody i only did all i did was mention a word the co-creation and and core human values and look at what happened this is just it's uh, it's emotional it's beautiful and uh, having eva to and maya to participate that's even magic yeah all right and how about how about to end with the compassion exercise that's beautiful yes let's do that i hope uh, i'm sure that everybody agrees that's the compassion exercise. The compassion exercise is from the Avatar Compassion Project. And this uh, exercise and all the materials are translated in 25 languages. And Avatar also wants to feel, uh, to create that we can work together, that our beliefs are the only things that diff are different, but that in fact we want the same. So the compassion exercise. Honesty with yourself leads to compassion for others. The objective is to increase the amount of compassion in the world. Expected result, a personal sense of peace. The instructions. This exercise can be done anywhere that people congregate. Airports, malls, parks, beaches. It should be done on strangers, unobtrusively, from some distance. Try to do all five steps on the same person. And it can be done by couples and family members to increase understanding of each other. It can be done on old enemies and antagonists still present in your memories. And it can be done on other life forms, plants, animals, people that have passed away. So I would like to invite you to take a person in your attention you want to share compassion with. Do you all have one person in your attention? Okay. With attention on the person, repeat to yourself, just like me, this person is seeking some happiness 
for his or her life. Step two, with attention on the person, repeat to yourself, just like me, this person is trying to avoid suffering in his or her life. With attention on the person, repeat to yourself, just like me, this person has known sadness, loneliness and despair. Step four, with attention on the person, repeat to yourself, just like me, this person is seeking to fulfill his or her needs. Step five, with attention on the person, repeat to yourself, just like me, this person is learning about life. And love is an expression of the willingness to create space in which something is allowed to change. So in fact, we need a lot of love to create change. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. Not only love, also trust, trust in yourself. Um, we, we just have a few minutes and uh, I was going to ask uh, Melody, you've been doing a lot of singing today. I'm not going to ask you to sing, but maybe, uh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> maybe I have to ask you to close this off then with the song. I was gonna, what I was going to ask you to see, well, you've done, you celebrate the entire block of music. Maybe you can make a selection of that particular piece uh, of some other artist that you enjoyed most so we can close off with that. But then, obviously, we can close off with yourself and the choice of your own. I'll leave the choice to you. Okay. Um, you want me to think about what was presented in the music section? Well, um, I don't I want it. I, that was a suggestion. I don't want anything, no, no, right? No, no, I know. I was just trying to clarify your question. <laughs> I think Upeme's uh, song was... Uh, wonderful africa was wonderful so many uh, the children singing if you're happy and you know it and <laughs> was it, it was in turkish right yes i i love that because as a music educator i've taught little children that song forever but to hear it in turkish and then have them do the movements was yeah. a thrill for me so i i loved every part of what you presented from people all around the world uh it was very exciting to me. So to honor Maya and Eva, shall we choose the children? Shall we do that? Yeah, that is a very nice thought. Are you agreeing, Melody? Then we can see if they clap to, and stamp them too. To do if you're happy and you know it. Maya, you want to get Eva? Is do she you, there? Do you know how to sing it? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Ah. Of course, we don't know it in Turkish. Do you want to play it? No, for you have to keep going. Give it, yeah, sure. Okay. All right. So maybe it's... take off the mute. Maya, yeah. can you take off the mute? And I know you're technologically yeah. proficient. There we go. Good. Yeah. You are going all... to play it? Yeah, how about we all sing it and, and do oh, it? Oh, wow. Okay. Bring yeah. the child out of you. And shall I put on then the uh, video without sound? You could do that. That's a great idea, Marion. Yeah, then we yeah. have that connection. So the, One moment. Right. Yeah. So the children that you're going to see, Maya and Eva and Jeremy, are the um, children from Turkey that know if you're happy and you know it. So they're doing it in their language. Cool. Should we start? What do you think? Yeah, you can start. Okay. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. 
If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. Let's do the hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, what do you say? Hooray. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. And stamp your feet and clap your hands. The end. <laughs> wow. It's great to have Absolutely the beautiful. Thank you, Maya and Eva. Very nice. You're That's worldwide cool. artists now. Yeah, for sure. And let's have a look at the children a little bit. Or is yeah. it already? No, it's already yeah. ending. Okay. Oh. Good. Can let's, you start? Let's Can wave you... at them. <laughs> That's great. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. That's a perfect song to end with. It's yeah, great. very nice. Very yeah. nice. Well, thank you, everybody, for participating. And uh, I hope you join in to everything that we're going to do. I don't know how we can be in contact um, through the website of uh, how to engage. Um, it is uh, or maybe through the contacts that brought us here together anyway. Um, but let's take it from here. Um, sky's the limit. Co-creation. Happiness wellness thank you thank you <laughs> thank you all right thank you, everybody, everybody. Yeah. thank you deborah thank you bye 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 everybody bye 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 i like the way you sing everybody's name when you say goodbye <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Hi, I'll share the videos as soon as they're ready. Wonderful. All right.